In this video, I'll be explaining how learning really works and how to learn most effectively, efficiently, and enjoyably. I'll be explaining some of the brain's learning architecture, describing a powerful learning model called VCall Plus 7, the virtuous cycle of learning and plus seven skills, and introducing the mighty micro VCall. Optimal learning is efficient, effective, and enjoyable. In an ideal world, we would all learn optimally, all of the time. But for most of us, this kind of learning is elusive, partly because the way most of us learned in school was far from optimal. What is the object of learning? Knowledge, but not just any knowledge. Most people want to build the kind of knowledge that will increase their ability to thrive in the real world. We call this usable knowledge, knowledge for real life. Many people think of knowledge as stuff you remember because it's gotten into your brain. But knowledge is not stuff, and the brain is not a simple container. In reality, Knowledge represents dynamic connections between neurons and the arrangement and rearrangement of certain molecules within neurons. It's about connection and communication, not stuff. Ideally, knowledge is constructed through moment-to-moment -moment reflective interactions with our social and physical environments. This is a process that progressively deepens understanding and skill by ensuring that everything we learn provides a strong foundation for what comes next. It goes way beyond stuff. This is a picture of connections in an adult's brain. Neuroscientists call it the connectome. Each strand in this image represents one or more connections between different parts of the brain. The scientists who discovered the connectome we're astounded by the many ways in which different parts of the brain, those associated with knowledge, experience, emotion, and the senses, are interconnected. They then demonstrated that when it comes to putting knowledge to work, the more interconnections, the better. In fact, people with more integrated connectomes have better reasoning, problem solving, and decision making skills than those whose connectomes are less integrated. Learning stuff is not enough to build an optimally integrated connectome. We need to learn in a way that connects new knowledge with existing knowledge in multiple ways, through thought, experience, emotion, and the senses. Fortunately, this is the way our brains were designed to learn. Micro V calls help us learn the way the brain was designed to learn because they help us leverage the built in mental processes that drive learning. They give the brain what it needs to switch on our natural learning mechanisms. Ideal learning goals are just difficult enough to be challenging, but not so difficult that failure is the usual outcome. We call the zone in which the learning challenge is just right, the Goldilocks zone. Learning in the zone triggers the dopamine opioid cycle, which makes learning more efficient and much more fun. The dopamine opioid cycle is the brain's natural motivational cycle for learning. When we set a goal in the Goldilocks zone, the brain releases dopamine, the striving hormone, which makes us want to learn. Each time we make progress toward our goal, that counts as a success. The brain releases opioids, which makes us feel anything from satisfaction to euphoria, depending on the goal and the learner. To set a goal that's just right, we need to know where we are in our current ability to understand an idea or concept and apply it in the real world. Babies and experienced micro V callers can literally sense what comes next. New micro V callers need help getting started, which is why Lectica makes assessments that are designed 
to help them locate the Goldilocks zone. To learn optimally in the Goldilocks zone, people need to feel challenged, safe, and optimistic. This sounds simple, but we've found that creating these conditions can sometimes be challenging. We developed vCall Plus 7 to help people learn the way their brains are designed to learn. The Virtuous Cycle of Learning, or vCall, is a simple series of steps. First, set a learning goal. Second, gather any information you may need to pursue the goal. Third, apply what you've learned. Fourth, reflect on the outcome. And fifth, reset your learning goal in light of your reflections. We call the first step in the cycle set for setting goals. Goal setting can be accomplished in a number of ways. In some cases, as in learning to walk, all we need to set the next goal is direct feedback from the physical environment or our own bodies. But goal setting often works best when we have some kind of human support. For example, feedback from an instructor, peer, mentor, expert, or formative assessment. In the case of learning how to walk, new goals were set in response to direct indicators of success or failure. Oh, when I tried that, I was able to get two steps further. Or, okay, so waving my hand when I'm trying to stand up makes me fall down. But as we develop and the kind of knowledge we're building becomes increasingly abstract, the indicators may not be so obvious. So we need goal setting skills. Setting goals for virtuous cycling requires skills for diagnosing the Goldilocks zone, then identifying incremental milestones toward broader goals. It's important to target small milestones because v-calling is most effective and efficient when a v-call can be practiced frequently, unobtrusively, and safely in a variety of contexts. And when skills targeted in vCalls are in the Goldilocks zone, it's also the most engaging way to learn. We call the second step in the cycle seeking. Seeking can take the form of being instructed, but it also includes all of the ways in which we locate, acquire, and evaluate the information we need to further develop understanding or skill. The most important skills associated with this step are abilities for determining what information is needed, gathering that information, and evaluating its quality. The third step in the cycle is application. In this step, we apply what we've learned through some kind of application or experimentation. Application supports the rich integration of new information into our knowledge networks making it useful, and ensuring that it's not forgotten. This is where we work what we learned in the seeking step into our knowledge network by applying it in some way. The most important skills associated with this step are those for putting knowledge to work and making connections between what we're learning from a specific application and our existing skills and knowledge. The fourth step in vCall is reflection. Here is where we ask, how did that go? Did the effort that I just made return the result that I had intended? Was it accurate? Did the other people involved think it worked? Do I have evidence that it worked? This is the step in which we refine the connections in our knowledge network. Reflection and analysis reinforce connections that are functional and weaken those that aren't. The skills required in this step include evaluating outcomes, seeking and making use of feedback, an awareness of cognitive biases and skills for avoiding them, and mindfulness and self-monitoring. VCall is accompanied by seven skills called the plus seven skills. They include self and other awareness. These are skills for observing and monitoring oneself and others, making connections, 
a set of skills for making connections between ideas, information, perspectives, and evidence. Seeking and evaluating information. This set of skills includes skills for seeking and evaluating information, evidence, and perspectives. Applying knowledge. Skills for applying what we know in real-world contexts. Reflectivity, which is a cultivated habit of reflecting on outcomes, information, emotions, or events. Seeking and working with feedback, a set of skills for seeking and making use of feedback of all kinds. And last but far from least, overcoming biases, a large set of skills that involve being aware of and avoiding cognitive and behavioral biases. Virtuous cycling helps people grow. Twelfth graders attending schools in which students do the most virtuous cycling are years ahead of socioeconomically similar students in schools that do less virtuous cycling. Curricula that feature more virtuous cycling produce more growth than curricula that do not feature virtuous cycling. By age 18, students in schools that foster continuous v-calling are 2.5 years ahead of similar students in schools that foster less v-calling. They are also on steeper learning trajectories, which means that they are likely to continue developing longer and further. Like everything else here at Lectica, the v-call model has evolved considerably over the years. Micro v-calling, which has been emerging over the last several years, is a special form of v-calling that's practiced on the fly within real life contexts. VCall is the learning model behind everything we do here at Lectica. But our thinking about VCall best practices has changed over time. Over 20 years of research and reflective practice have taught us a great deal. This course and the new Lectica Live reports represent the current state of our knowledge and the evidence-based ascendance of the mighty micro -vehicle. This graphic, which we often use to explain how big learning goals can be translated into actual learning practices, also tells a story about the evolution of v-calling as a learning practice. Much of the evidence for this evolution can be seen in the history of the learning suggestions in our reports. In the early days, we bit off big goals often suggesting that test takers should read entire books. A relatively small percentage of users followed up on these suggestions. Later, we focused on smaller goals, perhaps the consumption of a chapter or a couple of articles. More users undertook these activities, but many still complained that it was very difficult to integrate them into their lives. Still later, we began including vCalls in reports. These were much easier to work with, but often still involved quite a bit of reading or research. Moreover, they provided little support for continued learning. They were also pretty big. Most were what we would now call macro or mini vehicles. And while all of this was going on, our research was showing that continuous every moment vehicling was the best predictor of the quality and rate of learning. So we began to focus more on v-calling as an in-the-moment practice. The mighty micro v-call was the result. One of the big things we've learned during the last 10 years is that skills are best learned by going from micro to macro. Here are some of the reasons why. Learning is most efficient when we build skill at the micro level using repeated practice and reflection to help the brain connect micro skills in complex ways, forming increasingly complex families of skills. When we do this right, we're literally constantly preparing the brain for increasingly complex challenges. And we're doing it in a way that allows us to practice in low stakes contexts before we hit the big time. This considerably lowers the risks associated with practicing new skills. Here we illustrate how going from micro to macro builds skills, one micro skill at a time. 
Each micro skill, as it is habituated, enriches the knowledge network, gradually increasing the quality of the more general skill. What begins as incremental growth gains momentum as each new micro skill further enriches the network. Micro V-calling has many strengths. It's efficient, fun, impactful, low risk, effective, and once we've learned how to do it, it's incredibly easy. Micro V-calling is efficient. It's quick because it's conducted on the fly during natural learning moments. It's always available because it requires few resources. It's fun because it recruits the brain's learning motivation system, the dopamine opioid cycle, stimulating curiosity, interest, flow, and a natural passion for learning. It's impactful. Micro V-calling builds skills that makes people increasingly effective in life and work, and it can be a foundational step in creating a learning culture. It's low risk. Because it focuses on micro skills and micro moments, it reduces or eliminates harmful learning mistakes. It's effective. It helps people learn faster and better. It integrates new knowledge and skills into existing networks in a way that increases agility while ensuring a solid foundation for future growth. And it puts system two, the reasoning brain, in control of how events and information are remembered leading to increasingly robust intuitions. It's easy. It's easy to learn and use effectively at almost any age. And it's readily habituated. It reduces learning effort by automating skills before building upon them. And now take some time to solidify your knowledge by doing these apply and reflect steps. First, explain the benefits of micro V calling to a friend or colleague, then invite their clarifying questions. Afterward, ask yourself, how confident was I in my explanations? Which concepts were most difficult to explain? After a few days of mulling this over, try playing this video again to see how much more you can understand from a second viewing. Thank you for your interest in Lectica's work. Happy micro v calling!